Amen. Wonderful time. Um, we have uh, read God's word. It was the birth of Jesus as uh, we read in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 21. We saw that in the last two Sundays, in this <clears throat> weeks of Advent, we have been talking about seeing the need that we needed for a savior that we needed a savior right because of sin and that separation that man and god and in that last sunday we talked about that the savior that we needed is jesus that jesus came to save us he is the one that we needed to be in compliance with god's word we're coming to Christmas again, and next Sunday we'll be uh, celebrating our Christmas, and I would like to encourage you to join us and to send your little videos until Wednesday, until next Wednesday, okay, to my cell phone. Send those videos uh, to my cell phone, and we will get them together and we'll put in our next service. So uh, it's an our way to have everybody greet each other and give everybody Merry Christmas. And don't forget to Wednesday, so we have time to work in that. But it's time to celebrate, right? It's that time again. We're making lists. We are uh, picking gifts. Right? Now with internet, things are easier. You can just go to Amazon or other location and just order there and have it delivered to your house. Uh, it's time to buy those gifts. It's time to wrap them, right? It's time to wish uh, good wishes, right? It's the the atmosphere that we live. Time to check that list again. See if you have forgotten anyone. Uh, uh, you decorate your Christmas tree all in the spirit of Christmas. Uh, some put the light outside, right? Lots of lights outside. We also sent Christmas cards. And when all this, including the pandemic that we are facing this last month, almost a year, I ask, are you ready for Christmas? Are we ready for Christmas? We celebrate Christmas so deeply in these other aspects that I just mentioned here that we even run the risk of celebrating Christmas the wrong way, right? We need to pay attention to that. Among the facts uh, re recording the history of mankind, none of them achieved greater significance than the birth of Jesus. It's the biggest event of the world in all times. Jesus, God incarnate, came uh, to this world to live among mankind. But where did Christmas start? Well, Christmas began in the very heart of God. When human being broke the perfect relationship with God by disobedience. That's what we are celebrating. We are celebrating a way out of that that God provided for us. Right? The scriptures tells us that it happened in a time called the fullness of time. We celebrate Christmas because seeing God in the way of God's perfect relationship with man, and we then needed a savior to remove us out of that mess. Because of this, there was a need for restoration through sacrifice. And that's the reason that Jesus came on earth to be sacrificed for our sins so we could have perfect relationship with God. So, so Christmas has to do with the relationship between, between the Creator and mankind. God and man. This is why at the birth of Jesus, the angels sang, sang, they sang, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to man. So, so Jesus came to bring peace. That's why the scriptures calls him the Prince of Peace. Christmas is the time to know that humanity has been released from the bonds of Satan. 
Isaiah 9, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 and first part of verses 4, we read, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. You have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. The man without Jesus is afflicted and walks in darkness. That's what the scriptures tells us. That's why Jesus came for. And the yoke, the rod, and the scepter speaks about dominion. It, it, it speaks about being held in slavery. And the man without Jesus is a slave to sin, is a slave to Satan. And God wanted to put a stop on that. But Jesus came to break this domain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christmas has a, a real meaning, and that is Jesus came to be the king. He came to reign in our lives and to be our Lord. Christmas has a real meaning when Jesus, who came to be king, is our Lord. Is Jesus your king? Is Jesus not only your king? Is he your Lord? Always? Or just at Christmas times when we start celebrating those days? Christmas happened because men needed salvation. Well, the word of God says in Matthew 1 to 1, we just read, says that she, Mary, will give birth to a son and we are, you are to, put, to give him the name of Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. We must face this reality right on. It is the truth. If there was no sin, there would be no reason for redemption. If there was no sin, Jesus would not have to come to be sacrificed. If there were no sin, he wouldn't have come. He would not be we would not be celebrating anything. But because we are so far away from God, he came, God himself came to our rescue. Because men say uh, sin and he came to rescue us. Also, we can read in scriptures, in Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 28, as uh, scriptures tells us, that Jesus says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This leads me to think that if men had lived according to the rules of God, there would be no need for Christmas. But he came because we needed to be rescued. So Christmas is the time to remember that there is salvation for our souls in the person of Jesus Christ. Christmas is the time to remember that our sins can be forgiven if we confess them with sincerity of heart. Christmas is a time for us to be sure that we no longer need to live in darkness. Christmas is time to understand that man will live away from God only if he chooses to. Christmas is also time to understand that man will live away from God if he rejects the person of Jesus Christ. Christmas is the time to be thankful to God for forgiveness. And also Christmas is still the era of deciding to live for Jesus. Christmas is the time of reflecting and recognizing that we depend on the boy that was born in a manger. Christmas is the time to meditate that if we are in dark, if we are lost without God and want to please our Creator, we must look back at the manger and give thanks to the light of Christ. Christmas means dark opens to heavens. That's what it is. Christmas has two aspects. The first aspect is that of God, is that of a loving God who can move heavens for our sake to the point of giving his only son to redeem us. But also there is another aspect. The other side is our side. 
that of humanity in need of repentance and forgiveness of God. The facet of the ones who must act, the part of the ones who must do their part, our part, we need to do our part because God's part has already been done. God's argument with man ended in the cross of Calvary. Now it's time for us. It is, it is really up to us to receive him. To receive the Jesus that was rejected by many. Jesus came to be the light that illuminates every man. When you contemplate the decorating lights out there, remember that he is your light. When you contemplate the decorating lights out there, remember that he came to enlighten you. That's Christmas, God's gift time. God gave the best he had for us. He gave his son. He didn't go to a 99 cent store and got us something cheap. First Corinthians 6 20 says that you were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This is very deep. I'll read again. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. It is a season of gift lists. And as I said, of Christmas card. You will be enwrapping gifts this Christmas. When you are enwrapping, enwrapping a gift, remember that Jesus is God's gift to you. Try to have that in your mind as you're opening a gift this Christmas. Somebody gave to you, right? A family member or a secret center, a time of, you know, celebration. As you open, remember, Jesus was God's gift to you. Speaking of gifts, let's ask you a question. Um, is Jesus in your gift list at do you plan to give Jesus anything this Christmas? You know, this playing up secret Santa is very interesting. Imagine that you, you take Jesus as your secret Santa, let's say, all right? What would you give to him? Or, or what would he like to receive from you? He wants your heart. He wants your full dedication. He wants your body and soul and mind completely submerged in his precepts, in his words, in his life. Wrap up your heart today and give it to him with all the desires of your soul and you will have eternal life. Christmas is around the corner, right? Christmas has happened so that all time is man's time to have peace with God. Bible tells us that we are sinners and need Jesus. The uh, Apostle Paul writes to the church in Rome in Romans chapter 10, 9, he says, if we confess Jesus with our mouth, we will be saved. Give your heart to Jesus today would be our message uh, for this time of the Advent. Give your, your, your heart to Jesus. There is no better occasion, right? It is time for us to realize that in midst of everything that is happening, there is still light. Jesus is still alive. Jesus is still gonna come back and retrieve his church to live forever with him. There is hope and there is still blessings from the heart of God to us and to you. May God bless you today. May these words of the Bible Bring hope to your heart. And let us get together next Sunday, right? Invite your friends next Sunday at 11 a.m. at our Facebook page. Let's have a celebration together. Send your short videos. Just say Merry Christmas from your family to the church family. And we'll make sure we have, you know, a Christmas celebration next Sunday. May God richly bless you. Let's, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. We know he is the reason for the season, Lord. We rejoice in the fact that sin has no grip on us anymore. Lord, thanks for providing salvation to the whosoever that believes. 
Help us to celebrate Christmas this year, Lord, with the right reasons in our minds and in our hearts. And that is that you came to save us and gave us eternal life. And we appreciate that, Lord. And we thank you with our hearts full of thanksgiving. And we pray that in the wonderful name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So again, we invite you to join us for next Sunday service. May God bless you, give you a wonderful week in this preparation for Christmas, and may he bless us, all of us. May the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. See you for our next Sunday's Christmas celebration. God bless you.